Hello, and welcome to Applied Imagery's Getting Started series. This multi-part series is designed to get users proficient in the tools and capabilities available within the Quick Terrain Modeler software. This chapter focuses primarily on point cloud analytical tools and feature extraction. Let's get started by taking a look at some of our measurement tools. I'm going to hold down my control key and use my scroll wheel to zoom into an object. I'm going to click on the Start Menstruation button, left click to start my line, and you'll notice as I move around, it's giving me the three-dimensional distance. I'm going to right-click to where I want to end my line. And by right-clicking, I have a context menu of all the various actions I can take now that I have a line. In this case, I'm going to choose the Profile Analysis tool. Within this tool, you can use an additional measurement tool to take height, length, as well as slope calculations. You can also change the display by cropping the model temporarily in 3D space, which gives you additional context without some of the clutter of the foreground and background points. There's also a useful button here to mark your cursor in 3D. So you can drag your cursor across the height profile and it'll correlate to where you are in your data. Don't forget you can zoom in and pan by using your scroll wheel and right mouse button to, to pan. Measurement lines don't just have to be simple from two lines. So by clicking on the measurement line again, you can left click additional nodes to make a more complicated line. If you make a mistake, simply click the backspace key and it deletes the previous node. Again, right click to end the line to get context and actions. You can also double click the line and edit each individual node, as well as right clicking to remove and inserting additional nodes. To get back to the action context menu, simply right click in the layer tree and you have all your options here. Don't forget you can change your display options to change the way the measurements are calculated and the line itself looks. You can also resume placing the line and continue on with your measurement. Also, if you're creating lots of lines, don't forget you can right click in the vector section and click on recover menstruation line from cache and these are all your previous measurement lines. Another nice measurement tool is our drop line tool. I'm gonna hold down shift to select a point and instead of left clicking, I'm going to right click. And what that does is it drops a measurement line from the nearest high and low point. I'm going to click bottom up, as well as increasing the histogram bin size and radius. I'm going to change my radius to 3 meters, my histogram to 5 meters, and click resample. To get a better understanding of what's happening, I'm going to click on our show cylinder in 3D button. And it's showing that all the points within the 3 meter radius cylinder of the original points I've clicked is now being used and binned up into 5 meter increments and I have a few action and histogram options up here. Next up are markers. Markers are essentially placeholders. They can be either XY or XYZ information that can be imported or created within QT Modeler. Hold down the M key and left click your mouse to drop markers. You can also import and export by right clicking the marker folder and choosing these options. Markers can be moved by holding down the K key and left clicking and dragging. They are the basis of many of our analysis tools, and you can append additional information such as shapes, range rings, stencils, sensor cones, and more, as well as various icons. You can get additional marker information by right-clicking on the markers folder and opening up the marker manager. One of the nice things to do on a point cloud is to click on the attributes and sample attributes for visible model. And what that does, it appends the last attributes up into the individual markers that are closest to the point. Next up is above ground level analysis or AGL analysis. I'm going to go to analysis, AGL analyst. A couple of different ways to calculate. Um, we have a few different algorithms to choose from, as well as if you're going to use an external or loaded model. Since I already have a bare earth dem, I'm going to choose my loaded model. I'm going to click go. Now I got to select which model I want to compare it to, and it's the dem. And what this is doing is it's calculating the above ground level height of each point relative to the input in this case, my bare earth dem. If I hold down the shift key, I can select an individual point and I can see all the attributes by point querying this point from the last file. But if I scroll down to the bottom, I can see a new attribute called AGL. And that was a QT modeler populated attribute by running this tool. And now since every single point is aware of how high it is above my bare earth dem, I can use that to symbolize, which I'm looking at now. This is the new color scale. And I can also filter the data based on that AGL value. As I drag my slaughter bar back and forth, you can see my points are being filtered based on the AGL height. 
From this tool, we can export normalized point clouds, normalized DSMs, bare earth models, and more. Another tool to look at is called Grid Statistics. I'm going to click on the Generate Grid Statistics button. And this is a way to perform intracell level analysis on a point cloud. So we're going to drape a user-defined grid on top of this point cloud, and then each one of those grid cells, we can perform some statistic on some variable. For example, I want to calculate the density. Click Calculate Metrics. I'm going to turn off my intensity. And now we can see a color map based on the density of my data. Another interesting option might be changing the variable to Z, changing the statistic to deviation. Click Calculate Metrics. And now we have a vertical deviation map of our point cloud. Let's try one more. I'm going to change my statistic to slope. Click Calculate Metrics. And I have a slope map on my point cloud. Another interesting part of this tool is I can click the Push Stat into QTA button, which appends this new value back into the point cloud, just like we did the AGL analysis. And now once that's done, I can hold down my Shift key, left click a point, I scroll down to the bottom, and now I can see in addition to the AGL value that we calculated, I also have a slope value. And again, that's an attribute like any other. So now I can symbolize the data based on this, use my filtering tools, and further analyze and exploit my data based on these QT generated attributes. Moving along, let's check out our classification and reclassification tools, as well as extraction. I'm going to turn off some of my analysis here, turn on my height color, as well as my vertex colors. Let's scroll into a new area here. I'm going to use my selection polygon to draw a sub area. I'm going to go to Analysis, Classification and Extraction tool. I'm also going to click on the QTA button and Color by Classification. This is going to show us the current classifications in this file, which we can see down here in the legend. Since I have a selection area drawn, this tool is going to calculate the classification and extraction only within the selection polygon. If I want to do it on the entire file, I wouldn't have drawn a polygon. So here we have classification rules, which will define what classes can be overwritten, as well as what classes we actually want to write. So I'm going to classify for ground, as well as buildings. I'm also going to extract various buildings, adding centroids, extending the walls, if, and optionally exporting out a DTM or a DSM. I'm going to go ahead and click Go. Now that that's done, let's take a look at some of the products that it generated. I'm going to zoom into my area. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to recolor based on classification now that I've changed it. And now we can see the QT modeler generated classifications here. We also have our building centroids. So for each building that QT modeler was able to extract, we have a marker placed. Again, right click on markers, open marker manager, and now we can see all the additional attributes that are created from the building markers. Let's go ahead and expand some of these. So we have the ground height, the building height, as well as the perimeter. I'm going to go ahead and close that and turn these off. Now I'm going to turn off the point clouds and turn on the DEM. You can see we have additional vector layers that were created. First of all, we have building outlines, which are draped on the bare earth model. So these are three-dimensional files. But they're just relative to the ground height. And we also have three-dimensional roof vectors that are being projected down to the ground. Let me turn on the height coloration of our DEM, click on the Z key, which re-ramps based on our view extent. And now we can look at our three-dimensional buildings. Now these are showing us the sheds in the backyard. If we wanted to edit some of these out, if we only wanted houses, I'm going to go to edit, edit mode. I'm going to draw a polygon around these sheds. And it's okay if you get half of the buildings that you want to keep. I'm just going to click the Perform Vector Delete. I'm going to turn my markers back on. And if I want to delete those corresponding buildings, I'm going to go ahead and draw another polygon around my markers. And click Marker Delete. This is a good way to clean up some of the buildings and markers that perhaps you don't want. You can also double click on an individual building, which will expose the nodes that it was created from. It's helpful here to turn back on the point cloud. And as you drag the nodes of each individual building corner, you can make further adjustments. 
turn my point cloud back off. And we can see the effect also by removing nodes or inserting additional nodes. I'm going to turn my point cloud on to drag that node back up. And now we've edited our building. If you have any questions or feedback about the content of this chapter or any other topics in the Quick Terrain Modeler, please reach out to us. We'd love to hear from you.